Open source is for and about Philadelphia, and that's what makes it unique. There were several goals for open source. One was to look at the connection between graffiti, street art, muralism, and public art, because those are different genres of public art making, and I know that now they're all areas talking and influencing each other, and we just thought it would be really good to look at that more deeply and create an exhibition that embraced all of those genres. The goals of open source were really to take the organization, Mural Arts, and open it up to look at their infrastructure, programs, relationships to the community, and offer it up to artists so that they could come in and develop artwork that engaged the community. The Dufala brothers are dealing with recycling. They created a waste transfer station where they're working with scrappers to collect aluminum primarily, but other materials, and then melting them down to make art. And they made their work really inclusive, and I like the fact that they picked up on the needs of the building and the needs of the neighborhood, and they were always responsive. Kieran Ernell created a bodega inside a warehouse and used it as a means to engage the community. They took on a very serious issue, a divided community, and yet they created this amazingly welcoming space. And they built these podiums out of discarded wooden pallets that they'd been placed in the neighborhoods for people to come up and speak, and then they'd record them and photograph them. I thought it was a brilliant way of engendering engagement. An organization can never stand still, because if you stand still, you're actually going backwards. And so it's really incumbent upon us to challenge ourselves and to ask ourselves, what is muralism in the 21st century? It's our obligation to our program, to the city, and to the field. Odili Donald Odita is just an amazing artist. His work is breathtakingly beautiful. Odili's piece really ties the exhibition together. Because he's somebody who's always thinking about the hidden communities of Philadelphia. What are the hidden assets? So I love the fact that he partnered with the Brandywine Graphics Workshop and did something stunning on Broad Street. Swoon's commitment to this project was really impressive. I like the fact that she talks a lot about trauma and resilience. She designed a project where people, including herself, talked honestly, absolutely honestly, about their lives. She talks about how people can grow and change and move on in life to other things and how art can be part of that. Jenny Shanker created a, a marker for a community that will soon disappear. She embedded herself in Nara's homes in a very serious way. The window she provided into this community has been moving and very thoughtful. I just think that she is an example of an artist who, again, lives that idea that art can impact the world. The other goal of open source was to create a really robust exchange between mural arts and a range of artists. The idea was to have a balance and to really support the artist and their vision and really push it to, to reach what they wanted to do. This exchange between our information and their creative genius uh, happened and it was really quite wonderful and inspiring. Sam Duran is an artist for whom I have much respect. When he made that decision that he was going to work with people in the criminal justice system, specifically the men out of Greaterford Prison, he stayed on a path to make sure that they were collaborators. And it was through conversation that the idea of the maze as a metaphor for an individual being caught in the correctional system emerged. Shepard Ferry is fantastic. I mean, to me, he's a role model of someone who has this stature in the world and he uses his power for good. He wanted to work in the area of criminal justice. He came up with the idea to do these incredible portraits that deal with the stigma people face when getting out of prison. Shepard worked with the Restorative Justice Program. Decided to highlight former inmates who have come out of prison and highlight them for their success. We really looked at exhibitions all over the world and tried to create something that was really unique. It's important to curate the programs just like you curate the art. And our curator, Pedro Alonso, really felt that because the artists would be working with mural arts, because the artists would be thinking about a range of social issues, that that would differentiate ourselves from other festivals and exhibitions that are happening around the world. Normally large-scale exhibitions have a very global perspective. They look at what's going on around the world, what artists are doing, and they bring it to the host venue. 
Rarely is the art integrated into the host community. The way we set it up that artists would be looking at what mural arts does, the way there would be a thorough, rigorous examination of social issues prior to the art being made, that set open source apart from other exhibitions around the world. But at the same time, it was about revealing Philadelphia's unique urban identity. For an artist to come and think about art education, that's critical because it's such a huge issue in today's world. We just want kids to have great opportunities. So Momo, by connecting with art education, he said, I'm gonna create geometry kits. We shouldn't be intimidated by shapes and sizes and you know, making marks on the wall. And then he took this information and did this giant mural at 18th and Market. So his work just sings. Shanique made a gorgeous mural. Her idea of it functioning as an amphitheater and bringing kids, turning into a space where youth can express themselves is really wonderful. She's part of our goal to bring kids of this city the most amazing experience in the arts possible. John the Monk was an artist I was familiar with and I was like, he is a conceptual artist. How is he going to work with us? So when he said, I want to do skatable sculpture, I'm like, oh, that's fantastic. So the fact that we could do something that would be great for a community and would also answer a need, to me, that was fantastic. You know, JR is someone who I also have so much respect for. I love the boldness of his images. I like the fact that he's thinking about global immigration because who could not think about it? All you need to do is turn on the news or read the newspaper daily. When he told me he wanted to do something with immigrants, I said, all right, well, we can call immigrant groups. And he said, no, 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 I don't want a casting call. I want to walk around and find someone. I love the fact that he wanted to do something large and bold. Michelle Angela Ortiz is an artist that we've worked with since she got out of Moore College of Art 15 years ago. She understands that nexus of art and social change, and she lives that every day. The, her projects, the Compass Rose, the piece over in 16th and Hot Callow Hill in front of the federal building of Customs and Immigration Enforcement, really were the most prominent sites in the city. Michelle really humanized an issue that we all need to be more aware of. I think there's been a huge value to mural arts. First of all, it was a clue about how we work with artists in a different way. Mostly artists respond to a specific need, problem, site. They had a lot of freedom to create. There were not a lot of constraints. A group of artists came together and really inspected what's going on here. It's important that every year our body of work have some pieces that reflect that exchange, openness, freedom of expression. I think it's really important to let artists do what they're best at, and that is to create. Hee Yoon is amazing. She is like a creative genius. When she picked the Italian market, I was thrilled because it's such a vibrant community. She picked it because you have Italian, Mexican, Chinese, Vietnamese all living together. And she depicted that vibrancy, photographing people's belongings and the articles that are for sale in the stores, and then rendering it in her signature style. I love that Hee Sop and all the other artists have said to me that they want to come back to Philadelphia and do work. And isn't that fantastic that they leave here feeling that this is a city where art and culture is valued along with community. The big question is, can art transform the world? We feel like art can stir and bring about and incite and inspire change because we've really seen it. And so when you see it, you want to do it more, you want to do it bigger, you want to go bolder. You want to ask yourself daily, how do we move the needle? How to create a bigger, better impact on the life of this city and beyond. And the way you do that is by being really judicious about the kinds of projects you take on, the kinds of artists you work with, the kind of programming that you do. Because when you do it right, you see things shift. You see people open their eyes and consider things that never would have been apparent to them. We invited artists to come in to develop works that were about the community, engage with Philadelphians, and create as participatory an artwork as possible. And by taking on projects like Open Source, we advance not only our agenda, but the agenda of the city of Philadelphia. And by using art to shine a light on some of the most critical issues that our world faces, we have done a small part 
in making the world a better place. And ultimately, that is the goal of the Mural Arts Program.